Hey, Bryony. She's still working on audio, so it may take her just a second, but welcome. We're so glad to have you here. It takes a while to figure out how to... I only know Zoom because work is using it. Right. Hello. Hey. Hello. We're so glad to have you here. Bryony, Zubaida, Zubaida, Bryony. I've told Hi. both of you about each other. Yeah, we've chatted, but we haven't met, I don't think. I don't think we've had that, that pleasure. Sorry, we didn't, uh, we didn't dress for the occasion. Neither did we. Not this is Connell. Hello, I'm Connell. Hi, Connell. Yeah, I'm, I'm the only one who's been dressing for these, and that is totally fine. I just do it because I'm representing oh, my office. Show off your beads. We got it. Okay, yeah, yeah, I wanted to show off my beads. <laughs> it's true. So did any of you have a chance to attend the um, Namron Beltane virtual event this weekend? No. Nope. No, I was doing good to make the court, so. Oh, it was an absolute blast. They had scavenger hunts. They had His Excellency said games going on. Um, there was an iron artisan competition. Who won it, by the way? Uh, it was won by a gentleman from North Keep. Um, he just started in the SCA about a year and a half ago. His name is Matthew. Um, Everybody calls him Maddie. He is a professional artist in the mundane uh -huh. world. And so he kind of jumped into ANS with both feet. Um, he, yeah, he's amazing. He's really, really amazing. Um, and he did a, the theme was flowers. And so he did a panel inspired by the um, hours of, um, <coughs> John Duke de Berry, I think. Yeah. One of those. Yeah. Uh, but it was this, this beautiful floral panel on gold um, that he whipped out in eight hours. Did a fantastic and job. Gilding, people think it's wonderful and hard. And I used to gild backgrounds when I needed to do something fast and didn't have time to paint them. So I am impressed with him using a trick like that. Yeah, it, it just really was a beautiful piece. So one of the Brian the, is here. Whenever you want me to, Zabida, I will tell my story. Absolutely, please do. Go ahead whenever okay. you're ready. I actually wrote it down because I'm going to send it to you. Oh, wonderful! Thank you. So I'm going to read what I wrote to make sure it flows right. That makes my life so much easier. Thank you. I will ask Bryony how you pronounce it because I've been saying Oberoscales my entire life that I've known about it, and that's not how it's spelled. No, it's spelled over Oscals, but the problem is that this came out of this little Norse dictionary that I had, and it got misread to begin with. So, in oh, Bjorgsberg, that that's how you spell it, the way you had it in Blackstar. In Bjorgsberg, it's over Oscales, but it's actually over Oscals. So, okay, well, I'm gonna say over Oscales because that's what my mouth wants. That's fine, yeah. And then I'm gonna jump in and say my name is actually Zubeda. I know, I'm sorry. And okay. this is like I work with Kristens and Kristens, and, and and so just expect me to mispronounce it and consider a blanket apology happening, and I will do my best. No worries. This is of the Oberoskeles hunt and the wounding of Ivar. Once upon a time, in the fair lands of Bjornsborg, in the days of Baron Jan, the barony hosted a great hunt for all manner of game. It was the Oberoskeles hunt, and folk from all across the kingdom, yea, even the king, came to join Bjornsborg. To help care for so many guests, the folk of Bjornsborg raised a small village to host and shelter them. Jan's court shone with the fame of its people, among them Imre Shonen and his lovely lady Brianna Nioran, both of them tall and fair and wise, as well as Katriona McEnroe, Blaney Blaslagen, Connell McNaughton, Petros the Unmerciful, and other names of legend. Those who gathered to Jan's court for this hunt were no less renowned. Seamus of the Cats, the king, Carlana of Applecross Woods, his queen, Hector Philip Martel, Rowan Beatrice von Kempfer, Valerius Fidelius Camerinus, and many others. Anstior is not known for her wealth of navigable rivers. Alas for the folk of Bjornsborg, for the ships of the Vikings can go where other ships would founder. It is said they can float on the mist, on the dew, on the promise of rain, 
And this must be so, for a ship full of Vikings had traveled far into the barony, following the poor directions of Bjorn Haraldson. Its raiders lay near this new, unfortified village, and saw the many rich guests, and sharpened their swords, and smiled. And the hunt went well, and many feats of daring were done, and much game was taken, and the baron hosted his folk and his guests and his king far into the night with much merrymaking and wine and song, and they went to a well-deserved rest. But late, late in the night came the raiders and began to lay waste to the village, stealing and reaving. They were led by Ragnar Ulfgarsson, called Morkwolf, and numbered many feared names, including Ivar Runamagi, Randall von Nordlichwald, Willow de Wisp, Savan Kolbrow Skalsen, Regan Wolf, Osborne of Nymphsfield, Gunnar Thor Thordarsson, Jorun Iverson, Hrolf Iverson, and many more. They cleaved the quiet air with sudden war cries. Caught sleeping and unprepared, the warriors of Bjornsborg and their guests nonetheless leapt from their beds at the first alarm, reaching for weapons and running to their lord that he might lead them against the raiders. Battle was met in the narrow village streets, and many were the acts of valor. And Sir Emrys had run into the street to defend lands, liege, and lord, but he was ambushed and set upon by Ivar's sons and slain there. And there Brianna found him and knelt over him as the village burned and felt both grief and rage. Jan's folk pressed the raiders sorely, and these rabble had come to steal, not to fight. So hearing the cry against them and seeing their grim foes, they began to flee to their ship with their games. They burned the village as they fled, and fire and smoke swirled around both raider and defender in the night. The raiders fled, calling to their fellows through the flame and confusion so that all might hear and escape. Ivar Runamagi heard the cries of his fleeing companions and joined them, and as he retreated through the burning streets, he saw the beautiful Brianna keening over her fallen lord and laughed at his good fortune. Brianna, hearing his laughter, looked up and knew pure wrath. She ran at this foe to do him as much damage as lay in her power, and he, laughing at the fair fortune that sent this treasure running through his very arms, caught her up as his plunder and threw her over his shoulder and began to run to the ship. But Brianna was valiant and single-minded. And I have also said that in addition to being fair, she was tall. Pinioned over the raider's shoulder, dangling head down, she found her face near a soft and unarmored part of his anatomy. <laughs> she was a woman of Bjornsborg. <laughs> she was Imrus's lady. She used the only weapons left to her. She sank her teeth into the closest part of the raider that she could reach as deeply as she could. This unexpected attack in an unexpected quarter at the moment of his triumphant escape made the raider lose her and continue his flight to the ship alone and limping. The next day, beside the smoking ruins of the village, Brianna donned armor to strengthen the forces of Bjornsborg in pursuit and vengeance. Baron Jan and King Seamus found both the raider's camp and their ship, for, hoping for other gain, they had fled no further. Their leader Ragnar sized up his enemies and sent his warriors against those who seemed the richest targets. But Seamus and Jan led Bjornsborg to victory, victory and punished the raiders for their violence. Jan allowed some who survived to stay on in Bjornsborg in the promise of living in peace. One of those was Ivar. Ivar never failed in his respect for the great lady who had given him his only wound in this terrible raid and in her honor from that day to now, his coat of arms is told of her successful attack. This is a true tale told to me over the years by Fravia Jan, the Lady Brianna, and Ivar himself, as well as others who were there and saw all this come to pass. You see? That is awesome. And I have two notes for you. Overaskalis means surprise in Norwegian. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it was the surprise hunt because we knew it would be a Viking raid, but yeah. we didn't want the kingdom to know. Yeah. We wanted our guests to come and be totally surprised. And Bjornsborg really had built a village. It was a thin paneling, cardboard scrap wood with one tower. Emrys had a manor. There were other buildings, and the raiders really did burn it to the ground on Friday night. The landowner loved it. They thought it was oh. hilarious. Yeah, we so, could never do that nowadays. No, they loved it. Brian, he found the original event posting for it and under the map in the feast, which was incredible and cost $3. 
a person. Is a little warning of people coming south that there have been rumors of raiders in the area. So they kind of seeded it, but I've always loved that story in the Bitten Moon. So I will send yeah. that to you. In those days, Black Star was an actual publication mm -hmm. that was mailed around. Mm -hmm. And uh, part of the plan was Ragnar was to go about the kingdom for the months before the event, mm -hmm. recruiting Viking personas to be the raiders. Mm -hmm. You know, and they were to come fully armed and whoever came for a hunt would have whatever they brought. Uh, but uh, the cover of Black Star showed a bunch of uh, raiders climbing on a ship pursued by men-at-arms. And yep. uh, as Ragnar put it, they were so desperate they were throwing a barrel of beer at them. <laughs> and uh, somebody pointed out Ragnar was left-handed and uh, he drew things just the way, you know, he was just thinking. He was a commercial artist. Yeah. And uh, all everybody, all the fighters, the men-at-arms, everybody else were left-handed. <laughs> but it was uh, if you could find a copy of that uh, Black Star, it's pretty good. I had it out. I had it out this afternoon. That's how she got the thing. Oh, okay. And also, there's you, a note. If you can talk Connell into getting it back out, he knows where game, it is. The game in this country, it says, it invited Please. people to the hunt and said the game in this country is dangerous, so we recommend you bring full armor. And they, this whole thing was was staged. But the, the well, guests didn't know that. Well, did you see the note at the end of the event yes. announcement at the very bottom? Yeah. There's rumors of raiders. Be careful, weavers. Yeah, be careful traveling here. That's fantastic. That's absolutely delightful. And I love the Bitten Moon. I remember asking about it the first time I saw it and got the story. So.